Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming back to UT Arlington, Mr. Robert Early. There are a variety of questions that all of you have at this moment, but the most pressing question that you will have at your lips and your mind right now is, how long is he going to speak? <laughs> Let me assure you, I want to get to the point and I want to make some comments that hopefully you all as graduates can take with you, but I have a few thanks that I want to make before I begin. First of all, I want to thank my mother for allowing me to be here today on Mother's Day. And I want to thank my wife for allowing me to be here. And if any of you don't understand the power of a mother or a wife, you shouldn't be graduating. So <laughs> realize that level of importance first and foremost. The other thing I do is uh, Dean Croson was kind enough to send flowers to my wife, allowing that to happen. And, and that is an incredibly kind gesture, and I'm very thankful for that. She's a kind woman and a good leader for this university. I'd like to also thank Dr. Gray. Uh, Dr. Gray put up with me. I was not one of his better students. He counseled me, he gave me guidance, and persevered. Thank you for allowing me to graduate. You're very kind. <laughs> you know, a couple, a couple comments that I think are important for you all to think about, and we think about it at John Peter Smith, um, a public hospital that sees over 1.1 million people a year, and is in the tough business of saving lives and the challenges that that presents. But a few words of wisdom to you is, first of all, make sure that you fall in love. When you're out there, you've had tough, challenging years academically fall in love, and make sure that what you fall or who you fall in love with is not just where you work and not just yourself. Fall in love. Make sure that you can enjoy something out of the workplace, something that makes you tick, something that you can leave and have joy from, something that makes you feel better. I also want you to think about a mantra. Think about something that guides you. Think about that guiding principle that helps you conduct your everyday life. At John Peter Smith, we tried really hard to change the culture. We tried to understand that that patient that comes in that door is first and foremost. In order to do that, we had to change the culture a bit, so I came up with three basic rules, three easy rules to follow that you may want to incorporate yourself. Rule number one at JPS is you own it. You have to own it. And ownership is different than rental. If any of you have ever rented a car and spilt coffee in it, what do you do? You move the mat over. No one has ever had a rock fly back from a semi-truck on the highway and ding the windshield of a rental car and begin to cuss. You don't begin to cuss when your windshield gets dinged in a rental car. In fact, you begin to smile and say, oh, thank God it's a rental car. <laughs> when you join your businesses, don't treat them like something you rent. Treat them like something you own. Ownership makes a huge difference. Rule number two, I want you to seek joy. I want you to smile once in your day. You're going to give 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day to a workplace. You're going to give weekends. You're going to give hard times and challenges. If you can't smile once in your day, go do something else. Go do something that makes you smile. And in this world of computerization and quick tumblers and tweets and Facebook, if you have to put at 10 o'clock on your computer, smile once a day, do it. I don't care, just smile. It will make you feel better and everybody that works around you. And rule number three, don't be a jerk. <laughs> I'm so tired of this world in which we live in praising and raising those that are mean high. It's time to stop. I'm on a personal campaign against jerkdom. Don't like it. Don't like mean people. <laughs> The other thing I don't understand about jerks, I really don't, is I don't understand the end game. What does it get you? When you're on the highway and somebody makes a gesture to you because you cut in front of them, do you ever slow down and get up next to them and say, sorry, meet you at Starbucks? <laughs> it doesn't happen. There's not an end game to being mean. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't help. Because when you get mad, somebody else gets mad, and I got two badgers going after each other. 
So in order to make this society, this community, this nation, this state, and this city a better place, we just got to stop being jerks. And if we'll do that, it'll make life better. And the other thing in the last fortitude is just be humble. Don't get too full of yourself. Just be humble. You know, as mentioned in the introduction, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> I realize it's a beautiful, no, no. <laughs> I, I did not uh, want to engage clapping. I just thought I would impress you with my knowledge of Buddhism uh, and Zen principles. But one of the things that, as mentioned in the introduction, John Peter Smith, the hospital district for Tarrant County, is a $650 million operation. Actually, this year we changed to a $700 million operation with 4,600 people working there every day. It costs $2.1 million approximately a day to keep it running. There are occasions when I walk down the hall and I think, my goodness, look at what I'm doing. Isn't this wonderful? And I walk and I wave to people and I say, hi, I'm Robert Early, I'm the CEO. Are you happy for me? I'm happy for me. <laughs> and I remember back in the 70s when John Peter Smith, the first mayor of Fort Worth, deeded the land to the hospital district. He deeded a piece of property over an aquifer. There is water under John Peter Smith, and in the 70s it flooded. It flooded something fierce. It flooded the entire first floor. They were moving patients. They were doing everything they could to make sure the inconvenience of that flood did not hurt the patient base. And there was one leader, one phenomenal leader in that time period. And the CEO commandeered everything. The CEO contacted Frito-Lay out of Dallas and got food products brought in. Contacted Carswell Air Force, Air Force Base and got volunteers brought in. Contacted every local restaurant. Contacted the Red Cross. Had lighting. Everything you could possibly have. And it was phenomenal. No patient was hurt. No patient was harmed. Everybody pitched in, but nobody more than that CEO demonstrating their leadership. And at the end of the evening, everybody was just tired, sitting around, watching the news on television in the various rooms at the hospital. And in one nurse's station, they were watching the news. And they interviewed the CEO of JPS. And they asked him how in the world he did this. And he said, you just do what it takes. And that's what it means to be a leader. And at that moment, one of the nurses in that nursing station looked at the TV and said, oh my gosh. And they said, what? She said, that's my psychiatric patient. That's not our CEO. <laughs> True story. <laughs> you all are thinking I embellish that. No. The CEO at the time was in Hawaii on vacation. So when I walk down the halls and I think I've done something spectacular and I'm powerful and I'm good, I know that any psychiatric patient can run JPS on any given day. <laughs> Make sure you own it. Make sure you seek joy. Make sure you're not a jerk. Don't be too full of yourself and fall in love. I'm honored to be with you. I appreciate your families that are here today for the sacrifices they made. I appreciate each and every one of you. And from the fact that I know that you will lead this community, this nation, and this world, I couldn't be more honored and more thankful. Thank you so very much. <laughs>